I should note that Descartes is not the first person to propose an ontological argument. The, one of the earliest proponents of the ontological argument was a, you know, a Catholic monk, Catholic priest, known as Saint Anselm. And Saint Anselm had a slightly different version, but it really was very similar to this argument. And in fact, it is so similar that uh, in the first set of objections, which are raised to, to the meditations, which are raised by a Dutch Catholic priest uh, who's known as Catarus, uh, Johann, I think, Catter, uh, Catter is the name. Catarus is the uh, Latinized version, the Latin version of his, of his name. But Catarus talks about St. Thomas Aquinas' proofs for God's existence in the one where Aquinas is talking about St. Anselm's proof and he raises some objections. He says Descartes just like you know, Aquinas' proof which is really Anselm's proof and there, you know, it doesn't work for some for a few reasons. Well, to give you an idea, the slight difference that St. Anselm, Saint Anselm's version has is he starts with sort of a definition of God as being, and wait till this is a mouthful, because the way they translate it from the, from the Latin is, God is the being than which none greater can be conceived. A roundabout way of saying God, you know, in Brooklyn we'd probably say God is the greatest conceivable being. Sounds like God is supremely perfect. Well, from that and a few other premises, St. Anselm comes to a similar kind of conclusion in a similar fashion to Descartes, that God exists. And nobody could figure out exactly what's wrong, except one of his colleagues, another priest, a guy named Guanalo, you know, and kind of the way you tell the story in a humorous way is, you know, about five minutes after Anselm proposes this argument, Guanlo comes back and he says, wait a second, I'm not sure what's wrong with that argument, but let's think about a parallel argument. And if you think back to when we were talking about logic and how we would prove that an argument is bad, is invalid, if we could find a one that's, that has the same logic, perfectly parallel argument, that's invalid, we know that the one that we're considering is invalid. So this is kind of the strategy, and the way Guanalo comes at this strategy is by talking about the lost island. And the, the premise he's starting with is, the lost island has all insular perfections. Now what the heck are insular perfections? Funny word, but it's perfections of an island, insular of an island. Okay, so here is the parallel argument, starting from this premise that there is this, that, sorry, the lost island has all of the island perfections. So, and the lost island, by definition, is just an island with all of the insular perfection, or it would be, you know, the supremely perfect I island if we were taking Descartes' particular language. Well, from there we get the second parallel premise, that is, existence is an insular perfection, or if you want to go with necessary existence, could add that in. I really don't think it makes that much of a difference. And the third premise, perfectly, if the lost island has existence, then the lost island exists. The conclusion, therefore, the lost island exists. Now, I don't think anyone who's listening more probably anyone who isn't listening, is going to start packing his or her bags, getting ready to go to this perfect island. And you guys are now thinking maybe you're conjuring up images. What's the perfect island? You know, has beautiful beaches, nice white sand, blue water, palm trees, you know, I guess... Uh, uh, Serving your appropriate beverage under the, under, you know, on the beach, under an umbrella, you know, uh, if 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 you're attracted to women, populated with beautiful women, you're attracted to men, populated with very handsome men, 
you get the picture but right now nobody's packing his or her bags to go over to Kennedy and get to this island right because nobody thinks that this argument proves that this island exists now we see similarly if we think this is a bad argument it's parallel to Descartes argument you know, Descartes' argument, the first premise is God's supremely perfect being, or he has all of the perfections. Second one, necessary existence is a perfection. Existence here is an insular perfection. The lost island has existence, then the lost island exists. Descartes' argument, if God has necessary existence, then God exists. And the conclusion certainly follows. So, you know, the it looks like whatever is wrong with this one is wrong with the previous one the previous argument that is Descartes ontological argument still not quite clear what's wrong with it but it certainly casts quite a bit of doubt on it and there's there are various debates about whether islands and the greatest being are comparable and people go back and forth but initially we're beginning to see that there's something a little bit strange a little bit wrong about that ontological argument it would be nice if we could put our finger on it and I'm first going to turn to a couple of suggestions that were made that I'm not so sure work and then I'll talk to talk about one that I think does work <laughs>